And welcome to another episode of Down in the Blocks with CY, Chris Young, former Michigan pivot and product of Detroit Catholic Central, the Shamrocks. Yes, and sir. a Wolverine four-time starter for the Wolverines. He's uh, frustrated as I am as a uh, Michigan alumnus of this pathetic Michigan basketball team, and we're going to talk about that. And we're going to bring in our guest back-to-back by popular <laughs> demand. Jeremy Norquist absolutely knocked it out of the park last week as a as a guest and this was on the brink of him going to italy and we're going to talk about that in a second but guys before we get into this and see why i mean you're sitting down there at 77 degrees in melbourne florida on remote base so uh touche uh from you to us but uh we're sitting yesterday in the 60s today in the 50s i know you guys played college you guys played both played college basketball i played high school basketball but when we were kids this was the ultimate day of driveway basketball. I mean, everybody plays driveway basketball. You know, with the, the you know, kind of slushy on the side, the ball would go splat. But man, the coach we strung all over the driveway because it was hot. Uh, how about how about how about it, Jeremy? You play a lot of driveway basketball growing up? I did. I loved it. I loved it. We had a we had a little group of guys. Uh, start and we would we would get we would get it going. You know, someone would get mad, someone would get hurt. Yeah, um, that's just what happens, you know. But uh, there is nothing better when you get something like fifty degrees. You know, you you got the one guy that takes his shirt off when it's forty eight degrees. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's wild, yeah. but it's, it's it's fun. It gets you better. Yeah, it gets you better. And you know, in our in our drive over at Kingswood Drive at East Side Lansing. You know, if you got your shot blocked, you're you're it was back in the day, I was called you're getting stuffed. I mean, and that that was so humiliating, your face would turn red and you'd have to hit five or six 30 footers just to stay in the game. I mean, yep. it was like you cannot get your shot blocked, or you're gonna, you know, and the other thing is if you're driving in for a layup, and I'll never this countless times, and someone would run somebody into the flush pile, and then all of a sudden it's it's game on. Fish are flying. And and the dads in the neighborhood hear all this yelling. They let us. They wouldn't intervene. It's like you. Yeah, they just, They wouldn't step in. It's. Yep. <laughs> go ahead and figure great. it out. You just figure it out. How about it? See why yeah. down there in Plymouth, Michigan. So you know, I I grew up like when I was real young. I grew up in Livonia, and we had a whole bunch of kids in the neighborhood, but they were all older than I was, and they were weren't really so much into basketball. So warm days like today, we play basketball a little bit, but it was mostly baseball, and then we do like roller hockey in the street. So. As soon as that street cleared out, man, on came the rollerblades and out came the nets. And we'd be playing roller hockey, and then we'd go play stickball or something like that. There wasn't a whole lot of basketball going on because, I mean, I was the biggest kid. No one wanted to play against me. So Yeah, yeah. You know, so, yeah but just, you know what? That probably helped you because oh, then, 100%. It, you know, it, it, it diversified your skills. Yes. And, uh, I mean, there's something to be said for that competitive yeah. level. So, But speaking of diversifying their skills, the guy in the bottom of square here, Jeremy Norquist, did something crazy last week. Okay, with with our with our uh, mutual friend Nick I. He hops on a plane and goes to Italy to play tackle football at what, like forty six years? How old are you, Jeremy? Forty six. Forty six. Playing tackle football. Okay, when was the last time you played tackle football? I've never played in the tackle football game. I mean, yeah, I okay. played in like. Oregon, okay, you never play, or you play in the backyard sandlot where we're ripping each other's shirts off, all that stuff. You know, you, you did that. But you never played in a conventional tackle football game until last week. Is that correct? That's correct. I played at Ported Central in seventh grade, and they ran like a kind of a wing tee. And uh, I wanted to be a quarterback. And they were like, that's not your thing. I could, I could throw it all around the yard, but I wasn't. That type, so I was like, I'm done. And they tried, okay. to, they tried to get me back to play my junior and senior year, and I was like, uh, nice. my dad said if I broke one leg, he'd break the other. That's nice wow. of my dad, right? Nice, nice. So you played – so you're a basketball and baseball, your sports, and you played both those at Eastern Michigan. But So I want to ask you, what was this experience like, Jeremy, of getting hit? Chris and I were like wondering, like, what's this dude going to do when he gets hit? What if he's yeah. running a shallow crosser and some dude lays him out? Mm-hmm. How's he gonna physically react to that? I see why I would say no problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was uh, I so I dropped the first pass. Nick threw it right in my hands, dropped it, um, and it wasn't for lack of contact. I I saw the uh, 
they they had a guy uh, playing on my inside shoulder, and I beat him off the line. And the other guy, the other uh, safety took the wrong wrong angle. So I I instead of catching it out here, I tried to catch it inside like this uh -huh. and head up the field because I would have been gone and I dropped it. Uh, uh, I I have nothing to say about myself. I oh, yeah. um, well, hey Jay. So I was watching it live and in person. You know, here down in Florida on the on the YouTube feed, and there was another one in the second half that you came across the middle on like a a five yard, maybe seven yard out slant, something like that. And you saw that linebacker come up, and you went after that ball with some T Rex arms, my friend. You you didn't get those arms out past you. Gator, you, you, you saw this that, guy out the corner. Get hit. Like, this dude's gonna hit me. I'm like, I'm not gonna catch that one. He's you're gonna he's, get hit anyway, Jeremy. You're gonna get so you might as well catch the damn ball. That's what, that's gonna exactly, hit you. I was sitting there with my son Alex watching it, and that's exactly what I was telling him. I said, Uncle Jeremy got scared, you might as well just catch the ball, you know. I mean, listen, I was shockingly enough, I was not scared. Um, my boy Nick uh broke ribs. Did he um, really? oh. broke ribs, so he was out. And then my uh, Italian quarterback, and uh, Nick, en ended up was ended up kind of running the offense, and they kind of uh, in the second half they kind of ran it through me, <laughs> and they were throwing the ball up to me. It was wild. It was absolutely wild. That's all I can say. It was yeah. They hey, they did made a, they made a very good change at halftime. You know, before the half, you were more of a slot receiver, lining up kind of, you know, just kind of running these goofy routes. And then they put you as a, basically a wide out. And, man, there goes Jeremy just sprinting down the damn field. And all of a sudden, wow. you see the ball just kind of arcing and arcing and arcing. The camera work was, I mean, it, it, it looked like me with an iPhone. It was just, it was god-awful. But, you know, every once in a while, the ball would catch up. And, and you know, they dropped a couple right into his hands that he managed to catch. So, you know. We were going well, Jeremy, up from Orlando, Jay, watching. So Yeah, Jeremy, <laughs> explain how, what was this event? What league is this? I mean, how the heck did you get involved in this? So this is called the Masters League. And what happened is, is that uh, Team Italy played Team Mexico. So uh, there, shockingly enough, there were probably 500 to 1,000 people in the stands. And then they were all around, uh, like, the outside yeah. gates. Yeah. Um, it's over 45, um, and it was the, – the, the Italians have an Italian football league. It's an American football league. But the Mexicans have a high school football league a lot like the United States. Now, it's not near the United States, but they have, a, they have uh, high school teams, they have college teams, and they have pro teams. Okay. So the Mexicans have a lot of guys, believe it or not, that come over and play Division One football in the states. Wow. Um, oh, wow. So we played the Mexican net, and and uh, we got beat. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, what an experience! Um, what an experience! I couldn't. I, I was in shock. I was like, "Oh my!" I'm glad I didn't get hurt, obviously. And I mean, if this if this is my last game. I mean, you're one and done her, but it was great. But, but I got to ask you, how did you know the place? Did you did you have a walkthrough? Did you did you go to a practice? What, what's the, I don't understand is how this pulled, how you pulled this off. I watch too much football, right? I know exactly. <laughs> I know exactly what to run. And the thing is, is that in the first in the first half, it was a little harder because they were having. But in the second half, they were having me run uh, uh, go fades and okay. uh, slants. Um, and effectively, uh, what is the other one? A, uh, how about, a post how about a post corner? No, no post corner. Cause I hurt my Achilles. So what <laughs> happened is, is that a while back. So there, I was just, if I was, if it, like my dad always said, uh, when I was growing up in basketball, if you're even, you're leaving and that's in a yeah. good way. So yeah. if, if at first and the second half, they were trying to press me and I was just beating the shit out of them. Wow. Impressive. And then and then they tried to roll the coverage and then they would just throw it up to me. And I felt good. I mean, I was like, so I would run the the, the go fades, uh, the post, and a slant. And it was it was fun as all get out. It was absolutely absolutely so fun. Okay. And so how, how sore were you the next day? <laughs> I'm still sore today. 
You're still I'm sore. Still how, long, sore how, many, how, how long ago was you this this football game and you're still sore? Saturday. Okay, today's Thursday. You're still sore. But if you're going to do it, Tom, you might as well go off for five for 150 in a tutty. <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. You're my hero, Jeremy Norquist. <laughs> it was awesome. At 46 years old. No ACL. You know, you didn't know Achilles tear or anything like this. No, no, blown, no blown out hammy, no nothing. Yeah, yeah. nothing. Wow. Did, did you, by the way, did you turn it to an, it's still on YouTube if you guys want to watch it. I want to watch it. Send me yeah. a link. Throw me a link and I'll, I'll share it with our listeners. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. will throw you the link. But yeah. yeah, it was, it was, I mean, what an experience. It's like, what an experience. Okay, I'll give you another experience that was not fun. I was watching the last seven minutes of the Michigan Michigan State game down at Chrysler Arena when Sparty took over. It was like when you were a, it was like when you were playing there. See why? It was like 99, 2000, 2001 all over again yep. as far as the Spartan takeover. Yeah. Uh, you watched the, the, it from the, the one of the big Tom. One of the big differences is that. In uh, the 99-2000 season, my sophomore year, when the year that Michigan State won the national championship, I remember running out of the tunnel at Chrysler, you know, the old tunnel, and we came running out, running out, and we got booed. And yeah, the boos were the loudest thing I'd ever heard in that building. Yeah, so I, yeah. I know it was a little bit like that, but that was that still rings pretty pretty strong in my memory. So, yeah, well, this wasn't it, this. I mean, I was a season ticket holder back in those days, and this wasn't as bad as that, but it was it was bad, and they were, you know, this was. These were angry Michigan State fans who were really going to – I mean, they, they you know, because they had lost a lot. I mean, these, these Michigan State players had never won a place. Yeah. So um, there was that element. And but the, the fact going seven minutes, the 22 turnovers, the possessions, how do you explain it, Steve? Why? It, it's just lack of understanding of what's going on in the game. You know, they – okay, you're not scoring, you're not making your shots, attack the basket. And not attack the basket with a – a running hook shot or an underhand scoop shot or something like that, attack the basket and try and dunk on somebody. Get yeah. to the free throw line, knock down a couple of free throws. There's no – okay, you can always have a two, maybe a three-minute stint without scoring. Over seven minutes is unheard of in college basketball. Yeah. Because everybody's trying to attack the rim. Everybody's trying to dunk on somebody. And we just don't have anybody on this roster that wants to try and do that. We don't yeah. have anybody that wants to try and play through contact and get to the basket. Yeah. And now, and now with Kamwa being, being down for the rest of the season oh. – I mean, I, I, I don't know that we're going to, you know, score 60 points on average for the next five games. Well, I'm trying to figure out how many scholarship players because you got T. Will out, I'm assuming. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, you I don't got know Doug because he can't go on the road. Yep. The last suspension game. Yep. And then you have uh, Lomwa. There's only 11 scholarship players to begin with. Yeah. At well, least you're down then, I, But I'm hearing there's Jason, less than that. Jason I don't know what's dressed. going on tonight. Jace didn't even dress for the Michigan State game. And then I, I don't know what's going on with with Yo Yo. So I, I mean, oh yeah, I oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm Yo Yo. So you had all that. Okay, so you know what the bottom line on it, Jeremy? Six scholarship players tonight for Michigan at Northwestern. What are your what are their chances, Jeremy? I mean, at Northwestern, I don't think I got a chance. I was obviously I'm not good at predicting these games. I can tell that because I I picked Michigan. But that wasn't a bad pick because they let they were they were tied with seven to go. It's not like yeah. it was outlanded. I mean, I got a question for you guys. Why can they? Why are they in these games at home and then can't close? Like they they can't close. What is it? it it's not even at home. They're, they've been in. They've been in the games or leading at halftime of like fifteen or sixteen of their games so far this year, and then they just absolutely disintegrate in the second half. They what do you think no it is, Tom? Of what it is they need to do to close out a game. And it doesn't well, help asked, that they don't have a leader. They don't have an alpha that yeah. can just put the team on his back, you know, and just take over. And even if you don't have a guy that can that can take over on the court, you don't have a guy that's going to take over in the huddle. Right. Because you know, there's, there's alpha guys that, that don't go out there and score a point, but they run the team in a different way. Yeah. We don't uh, – Michigan doesn't have Eli Brook. They don't have – you know, they don't have uh, Xavier Simpson, Isaiah yep. Livingston. You know, I asked Juwan Howard that question, Jeremy, like what happens, you know, and I asked him about fatigue factor. And, and then he, you know, I was really disappointed in his answer. He he defaulted. Well, that was the excitement of the rivalry. Excitement of the rivalry. You're 33 minutes into the freaking game. All yeah. that, all the, all, the, all, that, all that adrenaline is all worn off by then. You're back oh, yeah. to execution level yeah. and just getting it done. 
So yep. disappointed in that. I don't know what's going on with this team. I don't think they're going to win another game. They're going to be three and seventeen. Yep. I give you the final record right now. They're gonna they'll lose their big ticket. They're gonna have they're gonna be eight and twenty four, and they're gonna and overall and they're gonna they're gonna have twenty four losses and they're gonna be three and seventeen big ten play. This will be the most losses. This is the worst season record wise in terms of losses since nineteen sixty. That's yep. sixty four years ago. Yep. Uh, I mean this is insane. So yeah. Jeremy, uh, if you're the athletic director at the University of Michigan. Would you uh, go a different direction at the completion of this season? I mean, I don't even think it's a, I don't even think it's a decision anymore. If they like, if they, if they have that record, I mean, the University of Michigan winning eight games. Yeah. Give me a break. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's better. Like, let's be honest. It's better when Michigan is good. Michigan State is good, and then they just battle. But I mean, eight wins. Like, what? What a. But you know, is this coming from Ward? Meaning that, like, does Ward Manuel even care about basketball? Well, he said last. I mean, he said last week, and see why I want you to jump in on this one, um, because he said that um, uh, he hasn't even thought about it. He hasn't even thought. So you're not even thought. But he did go to the game on Saturday night. You know, and I'll tell you why he went to the game because there's freaking a lot of former players coming back. Yep. Some that were in his era that, that when he was at Michigan. I, that's the only time I've physically seen him at a home game this year. And, again, he doesn't go to the post-game pressers like he does for, for football. Just show up for one in terms of just optical support. But um, see why I'm going to ask you, because you bring it real. And I've talked to a lot of players, and some of these players don't want to come on the podcast uh, because they don't want to get into this issue about Juwan. And they know that's – and I have to go that direction. Yeah. And um, – so they're avoiding the podcast with yeah. Michigan, and I understand that. Well, and, and, and they are, and I mean, I, I've caught in a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, I wasn't at the reunion this weekend because I was down in Florida, but, you know, I'm on a group text with a bunch of guys, and I, I catch all kinds of shit from the guys about the stuff that I say, but it's like I just – I got to call as I see it. And and the way I look at it as – I hate to say it, but Michigan needs to follow the lead of Ohio State. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, they fired, they fired their head coach last week. Like, yeah. Because well, you could I, tell by the way that you could tell by the way the team was playing, they were not going to get any better. They had, the team had quit on the coach. They wanted no part of playing for him anymore. They they weren't producing a good product out on the floor. And what are they doing at that point? Yeah. You know, and, and you can blame it on okay, you know, Kamala got hurt. Okay, yeah, that's one thing. But you know, Doug not going to class and he gets suspended and not having a full roster of scholarship guys. Like that's just inexcusable. There's just just go find a warm body. Just find somebody, you know, find a guy that's a good a good fit on the roster, just so we've got enough guys for a game like tonight, where we might only have six scholarship guys dressing. <laughs> you know, which is like, I mean, that, that reminds me of like my freshman year when we came in, and it was like we would go six and a half guys, maybe. You know, yeah. It was between me and Leon. We're six and seven, and it was the starters, and that was it. Like there was there was nobody else. So, so who's gonna who's gonna check who's gonna check Boo Booey tonight? I'm 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 feeling a no, forty well, pointer tonight. <laughs> yeah. All I mean, you know. All due respect to all the guys on Michigan's roster, there's been no one in the league that can stop Boo Booey this entire yeah. season. I mean, he's going to go for 40, you know. He, he goes for 25 regardless of who he's playing. And when he sees Michigan, he sees that we don't like to guard anyone off the bounce. Like, yeah. he, he's just going to attack and attack and attack. And one, once Terrence Reed gets in foul trouble, man, it's going to be just open season at the rim. Yeah. So, uh, Jeremy, what do you think? Just, you know, just I know you don't like to predict things, but give me a percentage chance that, that Juwan Howard will be let go at the end of the year. What are the chances of him being terminated? Either resigning, which I don't think he will do. Based, I think he's going to be fired because uh, I don't think he, he's not going to deem himself a quitter. But what do you think the chances of him being fired at the end of this year? Give me a percentage. 100%. 100% says Jeremy Norquist. I'll An outsider talk. giving his clear view. Yeah. Listen, with his he, he hit a guy. Another coach. Yeah. He got in a, he got in a tussle with the the, the straight coach. coach. He's got a shit record this year. Yeah. I mean, terrible. Yeah. Like, how can you like I mean, how many strikes are you gonna like like I said, when they hired him, I thought it was a good hire. I was wrong. Yeah. And how many how many strikes are you gonna give someone? Like, I mean, it's not that he's only I mean, he's the leader of men. And his actions 
are not a not a believer. Yeah. Right. Right. So see why percentage wise, as a former player, can answer that Juwan James fired. I, I think there's a 80% chance he's fired. I still think there's a slim chance where Ward will give him, you know, okay, this year was a fluke. Go go out, hit the recruiting show hard. We're going to increase the NIL. We're going to do this, that, and the other thing and give him one more year because, you know, maybe in Ward's mind he didn't have the full year because of, you know, the heart surgery and, you know, it wasn't out on the recruiting trail as hard because he wasn't feeling as well and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I think there's a, an 80% chance that he's going to be gone. But, I mean, who, who honestly knows? I mean, it, it, he might be gone tonight after the game or he might be around for another 10 years. I mean, it, it, it really, you never know with, with the way the Ward's talking. Yeah. Well, I thought, you know, back you know, the microcosm of the whole season, besides the turnovers and the bad possessions, the fact that he, he yielded to Michigan State, he didn't try to stop the clock. We didn't try to use his time. He used a timeout with 30 seconds to go in the Michigan State game. You're down, you're down eight. What are you gonna? I mean, what are you doing? I mean, what are you, you step a play, you're down eight with 30 seconds to go. I could yeah. I, I I was talking to Tom Izzo after the game. I mean, I got that. I mean, he's you know, he says, Oh, your guys play great and everything, you know, you know, he's just being a nice guy. But um, I mean he was puzzled by the strategic or lack of strategy lack that Juwan used to, to try not try to lengthen the game, if you will, see what. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, and, and I think that comes down to Juwan's assistance also. Who didn't come up to him? Did Marcelli not come up to him? Ted yeah. well say, hey, call timeout. Let's yeah. set up this play. Let's try and knock down a three. And then we're down five with 25 seconds left to go. And, and you yeah. never know at that point. So just yeah. to concede the game, you know, to not foul, to not do anything to, you know, try and extend the game even a little bit to give yourself a chance. I mean, that I don't understand. Okay, if there's 10 seconds left, you're down eight, you let it ride. But if there's, you know, a minute, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, whatever, give it a shot. Why not? You never know. And we saw, yeah. we all saw what happened with um, Illinois, uh, Penn State last night. I mean, you know, oh my God. The Big Ten, you know, the yeah. Big Ten, you know, hey, Jeremy, I think the Big Ten is kind of shitty. I mean, Purdue is, all, I mean, but Purdue got to be Ohio State is in the bottom four. I mean, don't you think this yeah. is the worst Big Ten season in a long time? About the bottom? I mean, with, with, with the exception of the, the, with the way they were anticipated to be, I think yeah. Purdue is obviously the cream of the crop. Well, you were talking about Michigan State being one of the top five programs in America. Um, Purdue obviously was going to be, and they, they, I mean, like I said, Michigan State. I believe they're going to be another Sweet Sixteen team. Um, that's just my take because that's what Izzo does. Izzo shows yeah, up yeah. in March, um, yeah. but they're not better than a Sweet Sixteen team. Um, but yeah. you know, I think Northwestern was going to be good. They lost Ty. I believe his name's Ty Berry uh, yeah. to a knee injury. Yeah. Um, they, they're. I thought they were a very good team. Now they're they're going to be. They're they're not going to be a good. Uh, they're they're going to be a quick out in the NCAA tournament. Um, you got Purdue, which you never know. They're you know if they got knocked out in the first uh, in the, the opening round last year. So yeah. yes, I agree. I think Illinois might be the the team that lasts the longest in the tournament. Yeah. Well, Absolutely. well, yeah. Until you know they lost last night. And that about Michigan State. Michigan State's going to end up with thirteen losses going into the. You know when when they have twelve losses going into the NCAA tournament. I think they're gonna lose a couple more, and then they'll lose one in the Big Ten. Uh, this is crazy about Michigan State. They're good enough to keep the streak going, but for preseason number four in the country, I understand why their fans are so pre yeah, are, are so frustrated because they flat out underachieve. The problem is they have no center. They need Chris Young at the pivot, and then the ceiling would be you know NCAA Final Four bound. Because they got no center. We're like I, a donut. I, I, I appreciate the compliment, but I mean, I, I don't know if, if I could even help this team because as bad as they shoot the ball, like, it, it doesn't matter what you've got inside. They just, they cannot shoot. I mean, every, every like, third or fourth game, you see them get hot and they'll shoot in, like, the mid-40s. But otherwise, this they're shooting in the, the low 20% from three, which yeah. is amazing. With the yeah. exception of Tyson. Tyson is, I mean, he's he's got to be a candidate for a Big Ten Player of the Year and all that. I mean, Edie will get it, but, I mean, Tyson's right there. He's been playing. Great yeah, he's consistent. Year. Yeah, yeah. Hold, he just, he, hold he guard, hold guard to that case. But at the end of a game, man, like the rest of his teammates don't want the ball. No, if it's coming down the stretch and it's a close game, you see them all go hide in the corner. They don't want any part of it. So I, I right. don't see them, you know, putting together a big run in the Big Ten tournament or making a big run in the NCAA tournament. But like Jay said, they'll definitely make it to the Sweet 16 because that's just what Izzo does. And then they might get a favorable matchup. 
make a couple of shots, and all of a sudden they're the, in the elite eight. Well, I, I'm going to I'm going to go with uh, the definite win in the Sweet Sixteen. I'm going to disagree. I think they'll get to the first weekend, but I don't I don't know about this team. I mean, it depends. You know, AJ Hogarth is you know, he, when he's bad, he is really really bad. Yes. You know. Um, so, but but hey, that's their problem, not my problem. Um, yeah. Michigan's got enough of their own problems. <laughs> they don't even come close to the, to the caliber of achievement Michigan State's had this year. Anyway, guys, great job. Uh, hey, I'm glad, hey really, glad you made it back in one piece, man. I, I admire the hell out of you for what you did. Uh, man, you are uh, you're the gold standard of toughness, man. <laughs> I appreciate I, I I appreciate you having me back. It's uh it's always fun hanging out with you and CY. I mean, uh, yeah. legends in the game, you know. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, CY. Hey, hey, hey a lot of sunscreen out there, and yeah, sure. uh, we'll see you when you get back. We'll get, get back over to Grand Fibers Pie Company. Sounds great. Thanks, guys. All right. See you guys. All right, we'll Thank see you, boys.